Through the first two weeks of this NFL season, one team stands miles clear as the number one scoring offense in all of pro football. And it's not who you think, like maybe the Patrick Mahomes-led Kansas City Chiefs or Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills, but it's actually Derek Carr and the New Orleans Saints coming fresh off their second straight victory in a beat time, this time against the Dallas Cowboys. Of course, going into the season, hopes in the Big Easy weren't high at all, with the Saints having stumbled upon the last three seasons with a combined record of 25 and 26, despite playing in the NFL's weakest division. But Dennis Allen's men have been absolutely flying in these first two games, and it's impossible to ignore just how electrifying they've looked on offense, putting up 91 points in the process. Of course, after Week 1's 47-10 demolition of the Carolina Panthers, many observers have felt the need to point out that this was achieved against the horrible Panthers team that looked a good tip for the first overall pick this year. But after putting away last year's 12-5 Dallas Cowboys in the fashion that they just did, it's hard to deny the fact that this Saints team is a whole new prospect in 2024. And possibly a contender to do some damage in the NFC this year. Sunday's game began with the Saints' 6.5 point underdogs, with Dallas looking impressive in their own Week 1 victory against the Cleveland Browns. Last year, Dallas had the very best scoring offense in football and the 5th best scoring defense, and was expected, and still is expected, to be among the best teams in football again. But this one was a disaster for the Cowboys from the first whistle. On the game's opening drive, the Saints sliced the Cowboys' defense open with Alvin Kamara, Rashid Shaheed, and Chris Olave all involved in the 7-play drive, a real sign of things that were coming. Kamara finished off the drive with a 5-yard run into the end zone, and before the Cowboys were held to a field goal on a 13-play drive in which the Saints' defense held firm. The Saints needed just one play on their second drive to get another 7 points, where Derek Carr rolled out on play action and launched an absolute bomb to Rashid Shaheed for his second touchdown of the year, which was very similar to the score he had against Carolina in which he just absolutely absolutely left the secondary for dead, making an impressive catch and tearing into the end zone. The Saints' third touchdown drive didn't take too much longer. On just the fourth play of that drive, Derek Carr found Elvin Kamara for a short gain on a screen pass, and number 41 ran 57 yards all the way untouched into the end zone to give the Saints a 21-6 lead. Having run just 12 offensive plays, the Saints had already scored three touchdowns, taking control of the game, and would show no real signs at all of slowing down. Of course, despite a 65-yard touchdown by CeeDee Lamb, the Saints offense remained unfazed, immediately responding with another drive that ended in Alvin Kamara breaking through the Cowboys defense once again. The Cowboys defense could only watch, and on the following drive, it was the Saints defense that made a play. Pulse and Adebo intercepted Dak Prescott and took it on a weaving 45-yard return, setting the Saints up at the Dallas 20, and 39 seconds later, Carr finished the drive off with a one-yard run into the end zone, capping off a dominant first half for New Orleans and effectively sealing the game with still 30 minutes to play. Mike McCarthy, Jerry Jones, and the majority of AT&T Stadium were shell-shocked watching this black and gold force of a nature annihilate their poor football team as the teams went into locker room with the score of 35-16 to at the half. From here, the second half was mostly a non-event, save for Alvin Kamara scoring his fourth touchdown of the day and, of course, a collector's item, a New Orleans Saints punt, rookie punter, Matt Hayball has only been called up three times in two games, with him spending his Sundays the same way we do, just watching these Saints from the sideline. But why has the Saints team seemingly transformed overnight into this seemingly unstoppable machine? The offensive playmakers on this team, Olave, Shahid, Kamara, and Carr, were all on this roster last year, but it didn't look like this. One possible answer lies in at offensive coordinator. In the offseason, Pete Carmichael was let go after 15 seasons as a Saints OC under Sean Payton. And while Carmichael Michael has presided over eight top five offenses in his first 12 seasons in New Orleans. Many had wondered if the team's offensive success was due to Sean Payton's impact, as well as the Hall of Fame quarterback and the Saints shooting up every week in Drew Brees. After Sean Payton and Drew Brees left the Saints, the offensive regressed significantly, and the front office felt that Carmichael needed to be moved on, despite the Saints' offense showing some signs of improvement toward the end of 2023. The man entrusted with getting this offense firing again was Clint Kubiak, son of former Broncos head coach Gary Kubiak, who was on the 49ers staff that put up 28.9 points a game last season, good enough for a third in the league. Seemingly influenced by his old boss in San Fran, Kyle Shanahan, in these first two games, Kubiak's fingerprints are all over this offense, with the team seemingly to play with a 
freedom that was lacking all last season. So many men on this offense already look better than last season, but we'll start with star running back Alvin Kamara, now in just his eighth season already in New Orleans. Kamara had something of a down year last year by his standards, recording just 1,100 scrimmage yards across 13 games as Pete Carmichael struggled to get the best out of his star back. During the offseason, there have been some murmurs that Kamara's days in New Orleans were numbered and that he would be put on his way out the city by the end of the year with his contract up for renewal after the 2025 season. At this point, the Saints and Kamara have yet to reach on an agreement and an extension but they many do think that will be happening soon. Paying running backs, especially ones who are approaching their 30th birthday, have been a big talking point in the league recently, but it's hard to see how the Saints can let Alvin go if he keeps playing like he did on Sunday in Dallas. He looked like the old Camara of old and the one that terrorized defenses week in and week out while Drew Brees was under center. Saints fans have been crying out to see that Camara again and he showed that with his 180 yard 4 touchdown performance which reminded everyone in the league exactly who he is just gliding through the Dallas defense and being that threat in the air and on the ground that he's always been. The next man we have to talk about of course is Saints quarterback Derek Carr. He had a solid 2023 season, throwing for over 3,800 yards, 25 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions across 17 games. However, there were absolutely low points along the way, and Derek Carr was booed more than once in the Superdome, with many fans feeling he was overpaid at $35 million a year. So far this season, Derek Carr has absolutely silenced any critics, having been nearly flawless in his two starts this year with a stunning passer rating of 142.4 and even the one interception was unfortunate with Chris Olave deflecting a fourth quarter pass into the hands of Dallas safety Donovan Wilson denying him an even better set line than he already has. Carr hasn't been known for incredible volume so far simply because he hasn't had to as both Saints games have been total blowouts Derek Carr and his offense have gotten business done early and taking it easy in the second half. Indeed, Derek Carr has just 39 passing attempts in his two games, aided in part by Alvin Kamara, as well as Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams just running the ball as well as they have. That process has been made much easier by the substantial leaps forward this offensive line has seemed to made. The O-line was a major concern for this team in the offseason, especially with the possible career-ending injury to three-time All-Pro Ryan Ramchick, one of the team's leaders on and off the field. In fact, Pro Football Focus even named the Saints as the second worst in football just before the season started. As a result, the first round pick this year was used on the O-line, and on their 14th overall pick, they picked a man out of Oregon State. He has slotted in well so far, having not allowed a single pressure on any of his 44 pass blocking snaps, contributing with his superb run of never giving up a sack in college. But one of the key parts of this O-line is a veteran who signed on a one-year deal in May, Lucas Patrick. Now in his ninth year in the league, Patrick has played for both the Packers and the Bears to, of course, mix success, having struggled with injuries throughout, but PFF ranked him as the best Saint on the field on Sunday, even above Alvin Kamara and Derek Carr with a 97.2 passer rating, beating out fellow O-lineman Eric McCoy for that award. Again, we are only two games in, but this unit does look solid and doesn't seem to miss Ryan Check at all and kept Michael Parsons quiet for 60 whole minutes. This line has helped the run games run smoothly and helped Derek Carr buy more time in the pocket, which has helped make sure Rashid Shahid was so explosive. Shahid has been a big play guy since he made his debut in 2022, but these last few games have shown that more clearly than ever before. I'm sure Derek Carr is quite happy to launch it over the top to number 22 and watch him get open. Only Tyreek Hill has 50 plus more yard plays since Shahid has entered the league and he looks likely to keep racking these up throughout the year. And even if he doesn't, that constant threat of a deep ball lets secondaries know that they have to sit deeper, which helps to create more options in the middle of the field. Beyond this thrilling offense, we do have to have a quick word for this defense, which has been impressive once again. Dennis Allen's men's defense arguably kept him a job in 2023 and through last year, and they looked well placed to be even better than they were again in 2023. This unit is led by veterans Cameron Jordan, Tyron Matthew, and the ageless Demario Davis, arguably the team's best player last season, ranking 44th on the NFL Top 100. On Sunday, the Saints defense was solid, constantly bending without breaking and forcing the Cowboys to kick field goals while the offense kept putting up seven at every other end. They constantly made it difficult for Dak Prescott in the pocket, sacking him three times and forcing a fumble that were unfortunate not to recover themselves. However, they did force two turnovers in the game. One was Paulson to Debo's 45-yard return which set up touchdown number five, 
and the other was picked off by Tyron Matthew immediately after Derek Carr's sole pick of the day. Plays like that summed up a miserable day for Cowboys fans, as the one flicker of hope they had was extinguished immediately by the 12-year veteran safety and New Orleans native. And just remember that this Saints performance came without four-time Pro Bowler Marshawn Lattimore at the quarterback due to a hamstring injury. This led to increased involvement for second-round pick Kool-Aid McKinstry, who had an impressive performance including his first pass defense of his pro career, with him learning from the likes of Lattimore and Tyron Matthew. Hopes are high for McKinstry playing a big role in this secondary. So did anything actually go wrong for New Orleans this week? Honestly, the only downside was Tampa Bay picking up an impressive road win of their own in Detroit. That 20-16 win wasn't quite as eye-catching as the Saints one, but it does give them a share of the division lead at 2-0 as they look for a fourth straight NFC title. The Buccaneers, and maybe the Falcons, could provide some obstacles to the Saints team this year, but by the way they've been playing, they have to be considered favorites for this division and to punch their place in this year's playoffs. The Saints do have it tough in their next four, with games against Philadelphia, Atlanta, Kansas City, and Tampa Bay, but if they can even make it do it 4-2 after that stretch, they'll be looking good. The Saints schedule does look weak, with games against the Giants, Commanders, Raiders, Broncos, and of course the rematch against those sorry Carolina Panthers, and at this point the Saints seem very likely to return to the playoffs for the first time in four seasons, and if they get there, who knows what can happen. I'm not saying that the Saints will win the Super Bowl or anything on home turf on February 9th, but they are totally impossible to ignore right now.